On the 3rd of April 2017, a striking Estonian man with silver hair disembarked from an easy jet flight that had arrived in Dublin from Alicante. Dressed in khaki combat trousers and costly looking hiking boots, he appeared every inch the enthusiast of outdoor adventures. A rucksack hung from his shoulders, topped with a neatly rolled tent mattress, as he blended into the crowd at the baggage hall, moving among the other passengers. Yet, Imre Arrakis had not come to Ireland to relish the verdant, rolling landscapes and the crisp rural air. His purpose was decidedly darker. He was on a mission to commit murder. Welcome to the Pursuit of Perpetrators channel, where I unravel the veiled tales of cryptic crimes. On the 3rd of April 2017, Imre Arrakis arrived in Dublin, hired by the notorious international drug cartel leader, Daniel Kinahan. Having successfully completed assignments for the cartel previously, and always paid punctually, Arrakis was well trusted. This time, his mission was to eliminate James Mago Gately, a devoted member of the Hutch Gang, and a significant adversary to the Keenahans. Despite his notoriety back home, Arrakis was confident he could slip into Ireland unnoticed, a risk he deemed worthwhile given the substantial reward involved. This job offered him the largest sum yet, 100,000 euros, with an additional promise of doubling that amount if he could also dispatch Patsy Hutch, Eddie Hutch's brother and leader of the rival gang. Arrakis had a track record of effective hits over recent years, making him a preferred choice for the Keenahan family. His methodical approach to stalking his prey prior to an attack increased his chances of evading capture. The Metropolitan Police suspected him of being the assassin who killed John Goldfinger Palmer, a former Brinks Met robber, found shot six times in the chest in his Essex garden in 2015. Initially mistaken for a heart attack due to the inconspicuous nature of the wounds, detectives later surmised that a contract killer had monitored Palmer for days through a spy hole in the garden fence striking in a spot devoid of CCTV coverage. After leaving Dublin Airport, Arrakis boarded a bus to the city centre for a detailed two-hour surveillance of areas his targets were known to frequent. He even bought a wig from a local gift shop to aid his disguise. At 8.20pm, a white van bearing the logo, Blakestown Tyres, picked him up outside Barry's Hotel on Great Denmark Street. Unknown to Arrakis, from the moment he stepped off the plane, he was under surveillance by the Irish Garda who had been alerted by police in Eastern Europe. This was not a matter of chance. In late September 2016, state prosecutors from Estonia, Lithuania and Poland ratified a treaty known as Operation Grey High, targeting a formidable and perilous international crime syndicate to which Imre Arrakis belonged. Both UK and Spanish police forces joined the initiative, dubbed Operation Icebreaker, which rapidly escalated into the largest crackdown in Europe against a gang implicated in narcotics trafficking and contract killings. The groundwork for this extensive operation was laid two years prior. On a brisk evening in early November 2015, a crime boss in Kaunas, Lithuania, named Demantus Bugovicius, fell into an ambush. He had been under surveillance for months by an adept Estonian hit squad, meticulously planning the perfect moment and location to strike. Bugovicius, who was romantically linked to Lithuanian pop star Vita Yakutin at the time, was shot in the chest and neck and died swiftly, his assassins vanishing without trace. Initially handled by Lithuanian police, the murder investigation soon required the expertise of the Organised Crime Bureau of the Central Criminal Police, CCP, of Estonia, who were called in six months into the investigation due to its complexity and the professional nature of the hit. Argo Lace, the head of the CCP, later explained in an interview that Estonians are globally connected and that criminal deals and decisions made abroad inevitably impact Estonia. He outlined scenarios where narcotics transactions, such as the buying and selling of cocaine or cannabis, might be arranged under the sun-kissed skies of Spain or in the quiet back streets of Amsterdam. Yet Estonia serves as a mere conduit for these illicit activities. Regrettably, Estonians have also been known to export their expertise in contract killings. Lace emphasized the importance of international collaboration in combating organized crime stating, we prevent international organized crime in cooperation with the police from other countries. It's crucial that we trust one another and share information swiftly to capture criminals who operate beyond their national borders. The CCP began leveraging underworld contacts to ascertain the identities of the assassin involved in the murder. A year on, the names Arla Grabi, Hanserik Avert and Imra Arrakis came under scrutiny. Detectives delved into analyzing their movements by retracing phone data and reviewing CCTV footage from the night of the murder. Both Evert and Grabi were known to police, though neither was considered a major criminal. 
Collaboration with Lithuanian authorities revealed frequent visits by the pair to Lithuania in the lead-up to the Bugovikius murder. While Evert and Grabi remained under surveillance, the focus intensified on Imre Orekas, notorious not just as a well-known criminal, but also as a celebrity gangster. Having spent many years oscillating between imprisonment in Russia and his native Estonia, he had settled on Spain's Costa del Sol, becoming a pivotal figure in a broad network of Eastern European criminals who executed assignments across Europe for formidable drug cartels. Throughout 2016 and 2017, detectives noted an unusually high frequency of Arrakis's visits to Ireland, which might have been overlooked if not for the fierce gangland conflict unfolding there. Suspecting that Arrakis's expertise had already been utilised, police resolved to surveil him closely during his next trip to Ireland. Now, back in Dublin, Arrakis was accompanied by a local, Stephen Fowler, who drove the white van. Detectives managed to link him to the cartel. At 60, Fowler was well acquainted with the Garda and his son Eric, who was shot dead a year after the botched plot against Mago Gately, had been identified as an associate of the Kinahan organization. Arrakis was staying at the Fowler residence at Blakestown Cottages, oblivious to the Garda encircling the property. They stormed in at 11.25 p.m. to discover a bewildered Arrakis standing by a single bed, his encrypted BlackBerry mobile phone beside him on the couch. When the plot to assassinate was uncovered, officers were aware that the contents of the devices involved would be swiftly deleted to cover tracks. In a moment of quick thinking, one officer used his own mobile phone to take photographs of an open message thread on the suspect's device. The thread featured conversations among four usernames, Onu, Knife, Bonfour, and Bonnu. Another crucial piece of evidence surfaced, a scrap of paper with writing in Estonian and the name James Gately scribbled in English, hinting at Nuri. The translated note directed, eighth row, second picture visible. In addition, police discovered a mirror bought just a day earlier along with a wig, stashed in a bag. This was alongside a bundle of euros and sterling notes. Detective David Gallagher later reviewed these secret communications that detailed the meticulous planning behind the attempt on Gately's life. One message from Knife, dated April 4th at 1.12pm, directed to Bon Nouveau, described the layout meticulously. The car exits the rear of this building via a shutter, which operates up and down with a buzzer. There's a ball camera above the entrance, champagne-coloured Toyota Avensis. His parking space is directly in front as soon as the shutter opens. There's a gym, he drives most days. He seems to go to Newry and back. A follow-up message from Bon New at 10.17am to Knife queried, OK, and where can we see photos of him? A subsequent message from Knife to Bon New at 1.12pm detailed how to locate a photo. For the picture, go into Google, type James Gately Dublin. Click on images, then look on the eighth line. It's the second photo. He's wearing a black suit, and beneath the image it clearly states James Gately. It's a clear image of him. The Irish police found themselves with a solid lead, as Arrakis had been arrested in the residence of a well-known Kinahan associate, surrounded by incriminating items. However, it was the following messages that sealed his fate and demonstrated his intentions clearly. One read, So far, it seems feasible to take him down as he exits his car, based on the Google Maps images. There's an open car park behind the house, but if that's closed, we'll need another plan. If not at the car, then perhaps on his way to the front door. There are large adverts along the route, which could potentially offer cover. Although it's clear there aren't many places to hide, especially waiting for the moment he emerges from the door. A silencer would be useful, particularly as accuracy is critical. If the scene in real life matches the Google image, a single headshot from a distance could suffice. Additionally, there's a technique to prevent him from closing his front door, allowing me to follow him into the corridor, though it only works if the door frame is metallic. The image suggests it's plastic, but I'll see what I can do. Best regards? This detailed planning illustrated the calculated nature of the plot, leaving Arrakis in an increasingly vulnerable legal position. When the case was brought to trial, the evidence from a handwritten note found during the investigation was crucial. On the reverse of this note were 15-digit codes necessary for accessing the phone and the implicated usernames. A fingerprint from Arrakis was identified on the paper. Police confirmed that Gately was residing in the apartment block mentioned in the messages and a tracking device was subsequently discovered under his car. CCTV analysis showed that on the 30th of March 2017, the device was installed by individuals in a blue Peugeot van who were later confirmed to be members of the Kinnanen organization. 
they had travelled from Birmingham to Ireland by ferry on the 28th of March 2017. While awaiting trial, Arrakis received further unsettling news. Lithuania had also requested his extradition for a murder case once the Irish proceedings concluded. At his arrest, a senior officer remarked on the uncertainty of the number of people Arrakis had killed. A year following his arrest, the High Court authorised a European arrest warrant, agreeing to his extradition to the Baltic state after he served his sentence in Port Lice Prison's segregation unit. Arrakis was charged with conspiracy to murder Gately. During his incarceration, he gave a peculiar interview to an Estonian newspaper through a series of letters from jail, wherein he claimed ignorance of any murder plot, stating he did not know Gately. He spoke of surprisingly favourable prison conditions in Dublin, noting his employment repairing televisions and computers behind bars. Despite his claims of innocence, he ultimately pleaded guilty in court and was sentenced to six years in prison for his involvement in the planned assassination. Share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. If you found my investigative analysis insightful, please be sure to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the Pursuit of Perpetrators channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon too, so you'll get notified each time I release a new video. I appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until then, stay curious and keep seeking truth.